definitely feels like a bit of an issue. I mean, there's so much dive potential with this Hardened Life Esports composition. Yes, you have the TF and the Talia who are, are decent at keeping threats at bay, but I feel like there's just so much overwhelming engaged potential for the side of Hon Life Esports. T1 gonna have to come out swinging here in game number one. Let's get under the rift for the first one. As we do see, Viper moving towards the top side of the map, and this is not unheard of either, to just randomly play your Varus in a different lane. Yeah, it's been interesting though, because we have seen this strategy, we've seen it in the LEC. Oh, Zayus. Oh, there's a crash down on top of Zayus as well. He's lit on fire. Delight making his way in. Viper trying to get that last couple of autos. Oh, so. uh, and often you can kind of have... Oh, oh there's the flash forward with the crash down from Delight. Gold card has come on through there as Carrier going to make his way over as well. But now zero summoner spells and no way to get to this lane. Zayus, you saw, just missed out on a full cannon. The whole experience gone. This wave is also going to be gone as well. Yeah, he's still got no CS. And the thing is, with Tristan Faye, you want to farm and get the extra gold. Just really put in a, him in an uncomfortable spot right now. Oh, Carrier making his way in as well. Speaking of uh, uncomfortable spots, that's where Zekker is as well. And this first blood as Ona comes on over and is going to be able to take that one down. So T1 on the board, despite the disasters of the top lane. You know, just camped up here on the top side. No one's bailing him out. Kerry is still level one as well. This game may end soon if they don't change things up. <laughs> yeah, you know, Kerry has one CS and Zayas is behind that. He's just walked up. There's still no farm for him to take. He's just not even touched Dominion at this point. Okay, one farm for, from, the, from the ward. He got the ward. So, uh... For a player who has teleport, just feels so bad as Zayas now hits level three here at five minutes. Doran's blade here. And look at what Doran can do. Yeah, he's just going to go all out. And Zayas, yeah, he does have the ghost, but Doran's not really finding too many of these cues, and therefore Zayas is going to be able to run it out. But trading ghosts here, and also ult does come on through as there's Kerry getting stunned up once again. Of course, no access to the quickness here. He's still level three. Isn't enough. Isn't significant enough, really, for a payoff. Well, oh! there's an interruption from Delight. Does push Faker over the wall. He has to flash. Get himself out of there. But Hummel Life Esports is going to have a very explosive mid game as Peanut steals away the red buff here as well. Knowing Faker has no flash. Yeah. Dash does come forward. Uh, Zeka does carry a stun back with him as he does rebind the soul, but Yone kind of okay with how things go in this matchup. There is a Q connecting here from Doran, who doesn't have the all out. Ona turns up once again, but I think this is mainly just to stop Doran from doing too much more. Dash is on forward. Yeah, Doran just trying to push him away from experience, and that is going to be successful. The thing is, he has no idea that could be all oh, the looking potentially yeah. for a dive. Delight is a pretty good bodyguard, but it's four versus two here towards the bottom side of the map. There it is! The sling does come back! The Viper will survive! And the turret is Zekka. so angry! Zekka is gonna move in! He finds the ulti onto Faker, who does survive the engagement! Zekka still just trying to protect his bottom lane. It's working out so far. As he unbinds the soul, finds the double knockup. Seismic shot goes wide. And T1 will not find a kill down here. Beautiful defense from... Oh, oh and they get the kill on a Faker! Beautiful defense from Hunter Life Esports. T1 give up on trying to babysit Zaya. So, like, we have to make something happen. Bot lane, not only do they not get the kill themselves, but they lose their mid laner as well. It's a disaster for T1. Counter it is by. Uh, okay, I'll hold that thought as Cease and Assist does come in. Seismic shove as well. The full combo, but from over the wall, there's Viper. Delight survived for way too long, but now Carrier has dove on top of Viper. He's trying to avoid the burst fires, as now the wall is going to come in, and T1. They single out the AD carry, and we certifying it will. Opted I mean, not to teleport without a lot of vision. Oh, there's a flash out. Zayas not risking it. I had a feeling that maybe he was going to be able to walk his way out. Um, and so very even here in this mid game, I think, like you guys were talking about, the fact that Gumiushi is so strong, it's a clear win condition for T1. Hama Life Esports, though, they just want to get into these team fights. They want to be able to try to lock down this area. Of course, Magnus Storm's pretty good, but so is this. The season and assist comes in, and Faker and Ona just showing Zekka that this combination of Talia and uh, and the Vi is not to be trifled with. Yeah, started this one up, Carrier on a flank angle. We know that the wall can always come in, and there it is for Faker. He is not going to ride it through. He's just going to try and disrupt us. There is the Destiny to light off on this side, but there is the engage from Carrier. The seismic shove, and Viper is going to be wiped out. Sorry, Zekka has already gone down. The Drake is going to be secured, but that is sold for maybe just a team fight loss. 
says Pika will take down Doran. All of that money. Meaning yeah, and you know, Pina is still up and available. Does have Flash, does, does have Smite. TP is available for Zekka and Doran, but the Baron is going down so fast. It is. Pina should be able to make it into the pit, but this is going to be a difficult 50 50 to win. He flashes forward and they just turn on him immediately. Taken down before the Baron's in range. That going to be the secure and T1 just level headed the whole time they'll take themselves their purple worm and now they'll look to take down the turrets T1 with the Baron he should be able to get even more of these items seismic shot going to be picked up once again as Faker finds yet another one that's a good glacial prison though onto Zayas he's going to have to get out of there the unbound soul gets Zekka back to safety as well but now the re-engage Delight looks for it but he's just dead before he can do anything and so T1 with five men strong, still with that Baron for another minute. And they've already gotten rid of the horse. Yeah, just waiting in the last couple of seconds here, I believe the Infinity Edge will be coming in, though. And that is... Uh, where, Boris, where is it at, man? Come on, hurry it up. Oh, my goodness. He's, he's in the back room. Guys, we've got a game going, please. Uh, there it is. Waiting. Oh, okay, it's going to be the quick blades yeah. to come in. And, of course, that is what's that's the often seen alongside the, uh, the Hurricane. It's locked in, you know. That's what yeah. you, you yeah. assume it's going to be. And now... Oh, oh no, possibly with a bit of a face check here. Will be oh. taken out two seconds before the Elder. And this is one of the issues, you know, they went in for the IE. Hold the angle here. Now he's going to have to wrap around. Oh, no 50-50 with no smite. Exactly, let's see what T1 can do. They're going to have to try and fight this to avoid losing the Elder. There's a seismic shock, and they are going to even out the numbers. There's no door. Okay, survives for a very long time, but then does go down. There's the Elder now. Executed Zekka finds him in a three-match job from Faker is massive! And it's a double for Faker, they'll take a double as well for Gumiushi, and it's now only Viper left with this Dragon buff, and I don't think they care. Faker's just gonna throw some rocks at him, and that's the ace! And even Elder isn't enough, T1, yeah. hey, it's already gone. There's easy, a lot of these champions for T1 can escape over the wall, as you can see. This will be his seventh. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Looking for that opportunity. Gets into the back line. They dive on top of Viper. He's able to get himself out. Now 1v1 and he finds it against Zayas, the ulti. And Viper's still alive! He finds the double kill. Oh, is going to be the next to go down into the GA. Is now Doran is just playing bodyguard. And T1, they couldn't do it! They killed him so many times Owner that again. time they weren't able to get there. Owner again is, is, is picked here before the Elder, and it's a really nice fight here for Hanwha Life, but they get a second miracle. They get a second lease on life here. How many do they need? I mean, we already wrote the obituary. <laughs> yeah. We were memeing about Karia and stuff. We were talking about Gumasari. <laughs> I mean, they... I was ready for game two. They are just splitting. We are, we are getting back to even territory as the Weaver's Wall is going to be just elected into Faker, not going to be able to convince them not to break open the base. It's like you say, it could be a trade of inhibited turrets, but Home Life Esports, it doesn't look like they're stopping as this Elder is still ticking down. Another five seconds on that oh! one. They find the engagement and they blow off Faker into the back line. Goes Curry, he tries to find that quickness, but he's permanently frosted and taken down. The deletion on two members, is that enough? For the end of the game, I don't think so. As Hummel Life Esports, they don't think so either. Yeah, so many cooldowns been there. They have to respect the Zeri. Guma still such a threat with Flash available, with GA available. They will actually look to reset the back of this. Doran's going to TP in. They want to look for the end They want to end. They want to end. They don't want to deal with that Weaver's Wall anymore. Or rather, the flip. Oh, no! they find the engagement! Able to get out of there though is Zayas. He did have that flash available as there's the teleport back in. Owner is going to be CC'd as well as he's going in, but he's by himself. T1 are just running in one after the other. The destiny is going to be popped, but I think their destiny is one dead Nexus and 0 1 in the series. Humble Life Esports were down 11,000 gold and they will kill the Nexus here in game one. You know what? I think I'll take five of these, please. Yes, please. <laughs> they take it in the end. Early game, the lane swap puts Zayas out of the game. I mean, Viper is just ridiculous on Varus. His late game lethality Varus. Viego. Definitely not what I saw coming in this one. And that is a tough pick to play out. How many junglers do we need? Hey, okay, all right, well. It's just done. You know, it doesn't really have legs to stand on, especially the Viego aspect of this composition. Just have to see how it goes as we jump onto the rift for game number two. He's been the only one to do so, but of course we know that he has an eclectic champion pool and one that kind of spans all of the champions in the game. And uh, some Biffo here towards the top side. Ignore the fact that they're taking damage, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to go away. As, yes, uh, it is something that they're just happy to, uh, to do for the entirety.
of the game door, and you can see, eating up that fury. We'll get another knock up here. I'm not gonna uh, lie. Standing on the block. It's gonna feel nearly impossible to judge who's like <laughs> yeah, getting yeah. the trade. 15 1 on it now, and 5 and 1 versus the Varus. Doran. Yeah, another knock up does come on through here as. Okay, Elastic Slingshot the flash out from Doran. And underground once again, Zayas electing not to flash after him for first blood and instead will just keep up that pressure. As he's trading with this act. And I love this act here for T1 for two reasons. One being, of course, the long engage range for those skirmishes we talked about with Viego and with the early team fights is area. Yeah, a bit of a crash down does come on through there. The chains do lock down Delight. We know that Peanut's in the area, the Ignite ticking down. Now making their way up. Peanut actually deciding to get out of here, and Ona knows exactly what's going on. Ward goes down. Peanut, I believe, is going to spot that, as we can see right there. Another snare going to come on through as Gumiushi down pretty low on the mana as Viper does find a piercing arrow on top of the center. At least one of them for Peanut here. Teleport back from Carrier, and they now Ona know. might have an opportunity. They don't know. I have no vision. Yeah, there's the flash forward from Carrier. Viper able to try and get off to the side. Good crash down to try and get him out of there, but there's the permafrost, and Viper will be taken down. Kumiyushi gets the first blood. Yeah, does manage to get the shield as the crash down does come on in. And Zayas, he's getting very, very small. Still able to get a decent knockup, but he's going to explode him. And now the Bloblet's coming on forward. Doran, can you take them down in time is the question. Only gets a couple, and now Zayas makes his way back in, but will not have that passive available for the next time. They kind of guarantee the, the sort of healing reduction, but the thing with it oh. is you kind of just wait out the healing reduction before you are on the ground. Oh, this is a little bit dangerous. This Faker is going to get engaged on immediately. Flashes away the Glacial Prison. Going to go wide. There is the lockdown on the Dragon for T1. But Delight gets them on in there. They take down Faker. Empress Divide is massive. And has two kills to start off. The fight carrier is not long for the world either. And Armalife Esports, they lose a Drake, but they'll take three. Mighty's up this wave. Oh. Might be face checking, though, as there's the Vault Breaker in. The ulti comes down. Empress Divide is avoided, though, as Faker able to get that Valkyrie off before the Azir swoop. In. Close call there. <laughs> a very close call. That pick can't contest top side. Oh, yeah, Doran in possibly a bit of trouble here as there's the Void Rush to come out. Dawning Shadow to keep them alive, but he tunnels his way and he survives. And Doran able to lap up these minions as well. They'll get their turn on this Drake. Unless you just slow play this, they have a Varus who's rotating over. They don't have to hard engage unless it's onto the package list Faker. He's got it on this angle now. Yeah, this is so dangerous. They do manage to take down the second dragon, but they look for the engage. There's the package to live it over the top, and it's Ona that goes down first. Echo will find Faker's special delivery, and it's Onwa that managed to get it on over. And it's a Hextech Drake on top of everything. T1 pretty happy that they are at least able to get the Drake. And he just already looks so tanky at this point. Yeah, no, this is kind of ridiculous. Is Gumiushi going to come on over? Piercing Darkness not going to work out. It's now, let's see whether Zayas is going to survive. He flashes four, gets the head bomb. The Empress Divide is going to throw him against the wall as they focus the turret. The Bolt Breaker is going to get the shield for Peanut. And Zeka, he survives with his shifting sands. Sets up his own turret as well as they take down the Zack Doran. He survived. His turret had already basically fallen down earlier, and the Rift Herald is going to charge into that inner turret as well. Doran actually having the gusto. Oh, TP coming in. Yeah, TP from Zekka here moves towards his top side. Is now Faker having to deal with it. Conquering Sand's going to come through, and of course there's Peanut. Turns up, and that is going to be just the last Sand Soldier auto, and Zekka just collects it. I mean, with Halo Blades here, the early Nashers, three kills to his name now. Already secured. Hanwha's first of the game, but there is the Elastic Slingshot. They dive on in, the package down as well, and they take down Zekka, the priority target. Doran looks for the back line and will be able to trade the mid lane in. And there is a great Magnus Storm as well. Viper, the next one that can try and carry this fight as Ona is starting to pop off, but the Piercing Arrow is going to take him down. Zayas now just trying to peel as best he can. Peanut, how are you still alive almost? Managing to escape as Viper has to flash away. Doran, of course, can just survive for basically forever. He'll make his way out as Viper was kind of baited into this one and will be falling down. Dodges a few abilities and T1 win a team fight. It's just tank diff. It's just tank diff. Both of these tanks, all three of these tanks, rather, running rampant in these fights. The initial kill. But Faker is just so behind in terms of his itemization. He does not match the poke of Zekka, ironically enough. Oh, oh no. Crash down. Carrier going to get knocked up and destroyed. Zekka. Is diving on in there, doesn't find the stretch up from the kill back does come on in though. And now Oda, he knows how to play the rel. And Prince does nothing to Heartbreaker dies over it. And Faker will now get into that back line. And Oda 
pretty good at the Azir as well. Very nicely done. He'll now just transform into everyone. And the snowball of the team fight is beautiful. T1, they love going to Baron. They're going to do so now. And Kuma is not going to be killed that easily. They do manage to get the flash. That is definitely important. But now the re-engage comes through Doran. He manages to grab it out of thin air. And T1 actually potentially looking towards it themselves. Your expectation was they would go for the dragon on this package. But they're starting the purple worm. Hunter Life Eagles all kind of retreated. Now right. they have to move in and respond. All right, teleport in. Yeah. Peanut has flash. Looks like Peanut they want to just group. Over the wall as Delight. He has an opportunity as well. Peanut gets into the back of the pit. This is dangerous. Has to flash away immediately. Now Doran, he's able to take the front door. And T1 are going to peel away. Faker still with that package up. They want to get that turn and they're going to need to do it sometime soon. Now the package is going to be used just to try and route Dor Doran here, but it isn't exactly the most. He actually just decides to go back on top of the package. I don't know about that one. That is going to be Ono getting his first kill of the fight. Takes down the big tank of this one and both flashes from the carries. Peanut doesn't have flash. They don't have vision. All right. Peanut and Delight still here. There's the CC onto the buy. He is very tanky, but the rel is going to go down. Faith is just executed, but I just don't think it's enough to win them this fight. Viper cannot turn up in time. Another teleport Echo. going to come on in. And Zekka, he could be the hero, but full information is there for T1. And they will be able to take down this Baron. Zekka unable to get in there, and he may not be able to keep himself alive. He is. Not enough cooldowns here for T1. I'm trying to attack Carrier, but you're going to take so long to kill him. Yeah, this you're, is you're, taking you're forever. And there is no damage here in this fight. Remember, this is a lot of tanks. Of course, there is Peanut there. They will be able to get through the Sejuani, but they have to invest everything to take him down. And they'll lose an inhibitor for it. They may even lose the base, as the bats have now been started for Hummel IP. Well, Dory Shadow just to stop them. And they'll take the first Nexus turret. There is so much damage under these turrets as well with the Corky in the center. I don't think that was worth it, I'm alive. Absolutely not. Threatening that bottom inhibitor, taking it down as Peanut now in trouble. Yeah, Perry just going to interrupt him here as Peanut tries to take the hex gate, but it is not going to work out. He gets himself a big old shield and is just going to be taken out. There is now Ono turning into the vine, looking to try and get a little bit of a re-engage. I think Peanut trying to buy some time makes a bit of sense, but feels like a little bit like he was throwing away his life there. Yeah, I mean, he could have maybe tried to set up for a sandwich, but... There's just no control. He's identified early. Oh, God. Oh, Delight taking so much damage here is now T1 pushing down this mid inhibitor turret. That is going to evaporate. And this feels a whole lot cleaner. There is the engage. The elastic switch up. Fantastic by Zayas to make sure they're all CC. The Empress Divide tries to get something done, but it's from the grave for Zekka. And once again, just engaging with reckless abandon is that gorgeous this game. And T1, they will end back and make this best of five a best of three and win one against Humble Life for the first time this playoffs. You know, said, and I think a really well-rounded game as well. T1 kind of hitting the mark across the board. That is certainly looking a little bit like a Zayas. Zayas special will be Cassante in the end. Yeah, so wanting to bulk out the front line a bit here, although I think Hunter Life have better tools for it. Yeah. Rani, so they will lock that in. A lot of power to cut through these tanks. And also it means you're not dealing with a full armor, Cassante and Orn. That should be able to get stuff done. Resets versus resets. I think very even when it comes to the draft. Top of the rift for game three. They ended up giving them the critical edge to win that one. As we could be looking at a world right now where T1 have a 2-0 lead in this series. Had certain events not yeah. come to pass in game one. I think a lot of fans would say that it should be a 2-0 lead right now for T1. T1 looking to start this dragon up already here, even with Zaka having a little bit of control mid lane. Peanut will come and suss this out, but he is on vision. Yeah, T1 with some priority here towards his bottom side. We'll move up as three. Try and answer this as Peanut pokes his head in. That is a decent searing charge, but Arc Consult gets Peanut out of there, but now won't have that Q available. That will be the Drake going over to T1. First Mountain collected here for a composition with two tanks. That is scary as Needlework has come out here. Doran fighting against the Cassante and will be able to stay alive with that extra healing from the ultimate. Ooh, Peanut, I believe, has slinked towards the north of this lane right now. They just want Zayas to commit to a trade. They earn some humility aggressively. Oh, there's the hook! And Zelite throws out the lantern there as well. I don't think they'll require it as Zayas looks to try and charge up that dash. Just amazing. Oh. The ulti's gonna go wide as well. The all-out to bring Zayas out of there! And he didn't
didn't even need Una's help. The massive outplay there from Zayas avoids everything. And so thank you for all your resources, top side. I get out, I press Ghost, easy peasy. Now he's putting the pressure on himself. Uh, let's see what the light can actually get done here, Chain. Not quite going to connect, but there is the ram. It's going to get caught, gets a knockoff only on to Delight right now. But his owner goes down so incredibly low. Super Mega Death Rocket coming in. Dawning Shadow to try and keep them alive. And Doran is just dashing around with reckless abandon. The Drake goes to harm the life. And they manage to pick up Deus. Emperor's Divide used just to get them the heck out of there. As off, what are you doing, mate? And we'll be just fine. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop him one more time, as this is getting a little bit rough now. Zekka moving on over, there's the ulti, it does come on through, they dive on in. Empress Divide gonna be avoided here by the Yone, but it comes through Miyushi, over the wall goes Peanut, and he's once again met with another T1 member, and they are routed where they stand. I mean, this is a huge overcommitment there, and there's a reason why Owner is gonna back in that location and not feel too afraid. Well, the Yone, Zayas. Off on an angle, has a Mega Blast Cone to get himself into that front line exactly where he wants to be. Death Sentence goes wide, and now Doran into the mist. Has been a bit immune, but Kumiyushi, he's not. The Yone dives on top of him. Super Mega Death Rocket is yet another fight. Started off with a Jinx getting excited. His owner not able to get his own reset. Great hook, but it's on to Zayas. That's not a priority target. That movement speed for Viper is now wearing off. Oh, that Q. But it's a great catch from Delight. And Peanut's going to lock down that kill. Now Kumiyushi running for the hills. Great cleanse. But it's not going to dodge a rocket. That is going to go into the back of his head. And T1 once again going to lose out on the fight. Good flash from Faker. But these death sentences are just magnetic. I think both of them feeling like they need to make like that play to get to that next level. That unexpected play that could possibly just create that edge. That might be throwing Shelly down here towards this top side as Zayas deals with the minion wave really nicely. The ulti is buffered and it's thrown out by Zayas as well. So he's not going to die and not going to be able to catch the Yone. Of people. dealing with the pressure there. You do see them moving over to capitalize. So now with this pressure on the top of the jungle. Okay. Yeah, Kumushi actually sticking around for a little bit longer than he needs to as the permafrost and Super Mega Death Rocket to give the kill to Viper. A wild attempt, but it's going down fast. Yep. The uh, control one in the back of the pit is going to be taken down, but it does give Homolife Esports full information. Hook now going to come on through. Flame Chompers go down. They do manage to secure the Baron, but can they find the fight as they split the Red Sea as in goes the Yone finds absolutely no one. Double knock up from Carrier is fantastic, and they're on top of Viper in an instant. Double kill for Faker, and this is on top of the Baron they've already taken. Homolife Esports just caught napping. And this is how you know, I mean, Faker ends up picking up the kills here, but you know this is a Faker call. This is his experience. They know they're tracking the teleport on Dora. Not really able to engage or flank with no vision, no teleport wards for Zekka. Yeah, they do have the teleport. So there's at least that. He can teleport onto the ward or something like that. They get a nice knock up onto Doran, but he's just barely inside the mist. They do get the Glacial Prisoner's Carrier. They have stepped too far forward. That is a lot of CC, but he just baited them in. And then the ram comes down. Viper trying to dodge, but he's going to get thrown back into the waiting arms of T1. It's more kills for the god of the mid lane. And T1, they're looking to take more. It's just the press W and I'm fine uh, and composition here from T1. There's so much disengage here for T1 if Zekka ults in to try to follow up on the Viego. He just is going to get instantly popped. The fact that Faker can sit back here with Ember's Divide and Flash is so horrifying. Another hook this time. It's on to Faker. He finds the playback as well, but the sands can be shifted. And a Faker is going to be all right. I'm like really excited because Delight's landing so many of these great hooks. I feel like the only person they would want to go on is Guma, but Guma has cleanse. So even if he does hit a hook on, on Guma, it gets cleansed. They're probably not going to go in on it. So the parry is positioning so good here. And, you know, owner's not really in danger at all. Look at the lack of vision here. Trying to identify where the best target is. Peanut does have flash. So yep. one smite, so don't have to threat the double smite. I think it still still needs a while before you can rotate it through again. Yep, they do have information that this is going down. Mega Scryer is going to come on in there. Carrier doesn't have the smite available as Control Ward will go down. Ornhorn sounds here as they look for the turn. Knockup is going to land, but it's on to Zekka. It's not Viper this time, but they have now split up Homolife Esports. Haven't quite been able to find the engages. Doran, not exactly an optimal target. As he does get into his miss, Viper actually back. So he did. I wonder what he was actually going back for. As the Super Mega Death Rocket comes on in, it just sails over the top of the Baron. 
Does have teleport, can join this fight at a moment's notice. As T1, they have got this Baron down extraordinarily low. I think it's actually going to be taken this time. Never mind, they are going to turn the big teleport as Empress Divide going to be flashed out of the ulti avoided once again. As Zekko also gets himself out of trouble. Doran going golden, but he is so incredibly low and will be taken out. The hook comes in and there is another ram to come down. Peanut flashing away and this time the Searing Charge is not going to do it. But Delight is not going to be so lucky. The double knock up is gigantic from Sekko who once again drifts away from the fight. But Humble Esports have lost too much and T1 have lost no one. And it's not a trade. We've seen so many of the trades go Humble Life's way with one for one. Viper lives. Oh. Not possibly engaged on here as Jonas Strong is giving us the full suit. That is massive. The snare is set up. Going to be taken out at the same time as the Baron. Kumeyushi with the fancy moves. And T1 are going to march up the mid lane. And now without the Yone, who has been that threat on the back line, every time we've seen Guma in trouble, it's usually been Zekka, the one providing the threat. Hard Life Esports in a much worse position to try and fight this off. I think they just have to give up the mid inhib, but their top inhib is open, so this could just be double inhib for T1 before Zekka's even back up. Whoa! Uh, Doran not immune. Uh, I can confirm. Taking a lot of damage here from Faker with that Leandri's anguish. And T1 gonna take their first Nexus turret. That was dead in a blink of an eye. One they cannon still in here. position, yeah. Still allowing them to continue to put the pressure on. They can take out this inhibitor here in top side. Two inhibs down, waiting for that next wave. Hanwha Life, seven seconds for Zekka, but how much of an impact will his ult really make? It hasn't been his day here. It hasn't been his game. Yeah, there's the ram once again. It is the ulti from Peanut, but not able to interrupt the call of the Forge God. Now Doran doing a lot of work with his scissors as Peanut able to get back, but that's not a reset for Viper. Just barely not able to get it done, and the Yone falls down. It's owner the locks that one up, and now it's his turn to pop up in the fight. Faker finds a triple just immediately, and T1 moved to match point. This could have just been a 3 for T1. They are driving the pace of this game. They are the ones ensuring that they uh, are in control throughout the entire thing. As, okay, we saw this once before. <laughs> He's gonna lock it. This in game four, match point for T1. And once again, it's the vein. This time around into the Rexxar. Consistent damage as well. Some tank shred, things like that. Certainly good news. Let's dive into the rift for game number four. Very, very loud crowd. Well, oh, that is uh, a Christmas tree in the river. And if someone's moving around very, very fast, well, that's a lot of people <laughs> yeah. in bottom lane. So, going to be a very comfortable early game here for Zayas, assuming that it's there. There's a big old hook to connect there onto Delight. Carrier's Aftershock does wear off first, but Delight also going to take about the same amount of punishment here. Doran's able to equalize the lane just a little bit. So, mid realms trading here. We'll see who ends up getting the better of this one. Faker goes back. Yeah, Zayas going to move on up as, okay, Flash still available here as Nice condemned into the wall. As Zayas gets himself the fleet footwork, and he is absolutely out. Still, Ghost had to be invested. The Nocturne's position not actually given away, I don't think, in that uh, little exchange. I mean, Great team fights for Zipper's Divide allows Viper to catch up on the Zeri. Kind of like how Goomer, Goomer was able to pop back after Zayas was put down the lame swap in game one. They didn't ultimately end up winning the game, but he was able to get a ton done on the Zeri. Oh, they have spotted that Gumiushi is possibly alone. There's the paranoia as Peanut dives in. He flashes on top of the CC. He's going to be there. The Crescent Guard is too good from Ona. He's just going to get them out of there. Zekka will turn up. They do manage to take down the Varus, but the Zeri, nothing she can do. And T1 will win the skirm. And what did Ox just say? You know, the first gank, the first attempt completely backfires. And as soon as I saw the paranoia come out and things go dark, I had question marks over my head. Is this even work out? You don't have prior, you don't have control. And the light will get taken Whoa. out here as well. No yeah, exit he's up, but well. I, I got a little bit confused. I looked over at you, Wolf, and then I'm like, wow, he's flashing under a turret. That was his turret. Yeah. And you can tell. Um, so do I really did. You, you are a Hanwha Life fan, but he's going to have to put the team on his back. And he hasn't, it hasn't been his day. And he is a player that has required a day. As now, that was a decent sidestep there for Gumiushi, but there is no way he's surviving this one. Peanut, able to lock one down. And so there is the first one for the Nocturne. We're going to have some cool reads, but it just has not been the case. Like this Nocturne pick, 
Them a big hole and drop as Carrier going in. Yeah, the hook does come on down there as they do get a stun. Carrier just all by himself, and he's really dead, guys. We'll see whether Hummer Life Esports can turn this into any extra of a kill. They give the kill over to Zeka there. You know, I, I really question whenever this happens, but it's been a bit of a consistent theme, especially since the champion has only shown up recently. Hanma, you can just give this up and go for the dragon instead. Yeah, Weave as well. Coming on through as Faker going to join the rest of his team, Doran. Just uh, watching, well, actually not, tunneling around, burrowing. Guys, just go Dragon. Oh, here's another possibility as the Magnet Storm comes on down. Chains of Corruption are not going to be enough to stop this one as Viper gets his first carrier. Is now in the back of the pit with absolutely nowhere to go. It's a double as the burst fire rains down. And <laughs> left, I don't know, Wolf, Ox. like, do you have the pin out? Well, is, yeah, the Runans for the Zeri, so a minute and a half until that Dragon. It's Once a big and I think all something's gonna be back up. Oh, oh dear, Empress Divide just gonna throw Carrier back. That is gonna be one pick, but the Baron just spawned 30 seconds ago. Possible opportunity here, as they have so much vision denial as well with things like the paranoia, the information from the burrowing Rek'Sai. Oh, Doran could be in so much trouble. There are four people coming on over that flash hook. Just amazing from Carrier, the seismic shove to push him back in. And if they just keep him CC'd, he is going to die. That is going to do it. The Rek'Sai goes down. In game three, yeah, this is dangerous because Peanut's still here and he has access to a light switch. Zeka has flash ult as well. This is really risky. Yeah, Paranoia does come down. There's a flash Magnus Storm, but it's only on to two. Delight not quite, quite finding the same amount of value and he is going to be taken down. It's now Viper versus Zayas. Zayas actually trying to tumble around this fight, but he's crashed into that condemn. Amazing onto Zeka as the Baron is going to go down. It's going to be Ona that takes it. Not able to find it is Peanut, and he's even taken down by Faker. Zeka gets rid of Carrier in the end, but they only lose one. As information trying to be picked up here, Ona might be their target as Paranoia comes on in. Ona able to talk to the rest of his team. Crescent Guard does come out. He's taking a lot of damage, soaking a lot of damage, but it's not going to be enough. And the kill goes over to Viper. There is the pick on to the jungler, but he won. Didn't have much time to use it anymore, regardless. Dragon, Ona's gonna be up from that. Oh, Baker. Oh no, there's the face check. The crash down comes on in, and Peanut, he will be able to get the fear off. Yeah, he does manage to get the rocks down, but that is going to be the last auto, and that one might actually be impacted. Really fast. Yeah, really fast, and also it's three mountain dragons. If oh, they get this. Ona is likely to be able to get in there, though. That is gonna be the secure from Peanut, and there's the Black Magnus Storm. Delight getting in there. Viper is halted as well, but the first kill is gonna go over to T1. Delight now in trouble, and he is gonna be taken out. And now Zayas, he is an AD carry as well, and he's looking gigantic in this one. That is going to be him hunting down Viper. He is going to be able to help take down Peanut as well. The hook from Carrier is just too good. And T1 are going to strike again. And cut your losses. Take the dragon and get and out the of there. Dragon. Doran, leave. Doran's going in on this fight. And yes, you got three mountain dragons worth of resistances of tankiness, but you're not going to live that long. Like these boards. We're going to try and start this Baron off as Carrier finds himself a hook. There's the blast cone. Tons going of to damage. Interrupt the action. Yeah, this is going to be fast here. T1 have to be decisive. Weaver's well ready for Faker. Yep, Faker gonna get that one in there as Delight off to the side. Not necessarily in the best position here as they dive over. It's actually Kamiyushi again! Taking the Baron with the arrow! We've seen that one before. It's now pressing guard. Ona diving on in, and he just takes down Peanut. Matters into his own hands. And now Delight tries to go for the re-engage, but who's tankier? It is Carrier this time. And now Zayas, this is where he thrives. Viper just taking thirds of his health at a time, although dishing back a fair bit himself. And so Zayas going to retreat to the side lane, and the Baron now encircling T1. They're going to look for some turns. I think that's when immediately Hunter like these people are looking for something. Well, they are definitely looking for it now. Tunnel does come in to flash out immediately from Faker. He is not risking it. He knows exactly what you say. But they just burn Paranoia yeah. with 10 seconds still Dragon, so... Oh, the Black Hook, and he manages to find Zeka! Free delivery with the Seismic Show! Carrier finding the angle! That may have been the game-winning play. Carrier, he's just taken this game into his own hands. He and Owner have had so many fantastic engages with his Locket, with Owner's Crescent Guard. They just go in, they're hell-bent on making the engages happen, and it works out. Oh. Zayas, will he be stopped? Viper on a, a weird angle there, trying to see whether maybe they could layer some CC, but it's not going to work out for Zeri with the man disadvantage. Golden XP being lost from Life Esports, but even a tower if this goes on longer. They do have control of the Dragon area, but... 
Ooh, Dragon area control is important though, because Mountain Soul with a quad stack, that is a lot of defenses. Of course, they have a vein. They, uh, she can cut through pretty comfortably, but AK1 are looming. And yeah, like you said, I mean, Faker, he's got the wall. He can just build that. He is going to put that one together now as Peanut is now in this pit. Can they win the smite is the question. Great spell shield comes on down, and that's the engage here from Ona. He tries to hold on. Pump not really doing too much, but it is Ona that takes the soul for T1. It's gigantic now because they're the ones with the shield. They're the ones with the control. Oh, and the hook is going to find this area. She is able to press that cleanse flash button, try and get himself out of there. But it's Delight that falls to flank angle from Saiyan to Black. The tumble and the vein is going to find the fight. He goes invisible and snipes out the Zeri, and this man maybe should just become the 80 carry. So There's good. the cleanup from the vein you needed. A fantastic grab from Carrier kicks up the fight. You know, on Life Esports thought T1 got the soul and walked away, but once again, T1 have controlled the game, controlled the series, and are now looking to end. 16 out of 18 KP for Carrier, and it looks like T1 have done it. Another finals. The Gen Z T1 prophecy, it just keeps delivering. And on the sixth time of asking, T1 will do it again. Another Grand Finals. Thank you very much. This is Deer for the post-match interview translation with T1, who just defeated Hanoi Life Esports with a 3-1 score and qualified for the Grand Finals for the first ever in the LCK to secure the finals six times in a row. Please welcome Keria, uh, Zeus, owner, Baker, Gumayoshi, Keria, and head coach, Kalma. Congratulations! First off, Zeus. With a 3-1 score, you have qualified for the Grand Finals. How do you feel? No, if we were to make it to the finals, I would have been really sad. But now that we made it, I'm just really happy. I'm, you know, the air feels really nice. And in games 2 and 4, you gave the opponent high priority uh, Rek'Sai pick away and picked Top, Sack, and Vayne. We saw how well you played them in the past, but how are you able to lock these counter picks so decisively in such important moments? You know, I thought a lot about facing Rek'Sai with many different picks, and I, I put in a lot of time practicing all these different picks that I'm able to pull out. And I believe that with Sag, I was able to win against Rek'Sai, especially during team fights. And with your amazing performance, you were POG for games 2 and 3. And since T1's top side is so influential, it really called for the opponent to focus you down. So how were you able to perform so well? Yeah, they were really sneaky and tried to really focus me down. And in game one, uh, I had it in mind, but I don't think I was able to execute very well. And after that, I think since I was able to counter their pick, I was able to perform pretty well. And in your per uh, personal career, you're looking at your second title in the LCK. I don't think there's anything special that I have to do for the finals. I think we'll be make we'll be sure that we're ready for tomorrow's match, and I want to do well. An owner, you succeeded in the revenge match against Hanoi Life Esports. How do you feel? In our last match against Hana Life, we lost 3-0. And I really wanted to do well today, and I was able to do really well. And I'm just grateful that we're able to do so and qualify the fight with the finals. And with Peanut showing a great form lately, he must have been so tough to deal with. But your momentum was really something else. What was the main focus during preparation? I think Pina has really good calls and good teamwork. 
But I think I today, luck was on my side. And your key pick today has to be Viego. With you leading games 2 and 3 to victory with Viego, what compositional strength were you looking for? In this meta, I believe that not a lot of teams are utilizing Viego. But I always rated him pretty highly. And with Viego being open, I believe that it worked really well for me personally. And you did so well with Sin Zhao. Are you just confident playing with him? Yeah, in terms of Sin Zhao, I think the champion itself is really good. I did have a lot of confidence in regards to playing him well. And now, you will face Genji at the finals for the fifth time in a row. So anything you would like to say to deny Genji from a 4 feet title? Every time we met Genji in the finals, we always lost and that has been a, biggest, a big regret. So I want to make sure that we are the first seed at MSI. Give it up for our owner. And next up will be Faker. Faker, eight years ago, you defeated Rox here on this exact spot with the same match score. And with today's victory, you have qualified for your 16th LCK finals. How do you feel? I'm able to stand on the final stage again. I'm very grateful. And just the fact that I'm able to play on such a big stage, I'm very happy. And remember you said you had such premonition regarding uh, the finals and you winning the finals before you going to sleep last time in the uh, last interview. So it looks like it's going to become a reality very soon. Yeah, I think it'll definitely become a real reality. I think this is a really good opportunity for us to challenge ourselves and win against Genji in the finals, finally. Now, you guys have T1's 11th LCK title on the line tomorrow. What is your resolution? We'll make sure that we're able to secure our 11th title and we want to make our fans proud. Next up, we have Kumayushi. Congratulations, Kumayushi. With your revenge on Hana Life Esports, you have now qualified for the title, for the finals. So how do you feel? I really wanted to make it to the MSI. And yeah, I... I think I really live for the opening, so I'm really happy that I'm able to make it to the finals. And yeah, just like you said, you actually had a great ceremony today. Did you have that just planned ahead of time? Yeah, I was actually going to do my ceremony and I saw the fog in front of me and I thought to myself, I need to show everyone something. So I actually came up with it on the spot. Yeah, it was such a cool ceremony. And we have some fog in the air right now. Can you reenact your ceremony today, right now? Yeah, it's but a cool ceremony. And you got two wins with Senna. And how dare the opponent leave Senna open? Did you expect that Senna would be left open? And we saw Hana Life Esports leaving Senna open and picking Zarya Nautilus, so I did think that they might actually leave it open. And I made sure that I practice Senna and just movements in general. And in the last game, you stole Baron with Baron. Did you expect that you would pull that off? Yeah, with Ferris, it's really advantageous when it comes to smite fight. So I I communicated with owner, and I think that's why we were able to pull that off so cleanly. And now you will be facing Gen G at the finals, and this will be the same exact matchup for the fifth time in a row. Anything you'd like to say to Gen G? Genji, we will be the one to stop your four peaks.
Next up, we have Keria. In the last playoffs, round two, with the 3-0 loss, we were expecting a new form from T1, a new uh, version of T1. So what kind of preparation process was there? There are a lot of uh, spots that we were lacking were regarding the plays and the communication, and that's what we really focused on for today's match. And the, both of the supports in t both teams were selected as, as the key player. Do you think the drafting went as, as you planned? I think we're pretty confident regarding what any sort of draft that we were facing. And I think uh, everything went as planned. I think we played pretty comfortably overall. How confident are you regarding winning the finals for tomorrow? Junji is a great team, but I think we're able to face them accordingly. I think we're able to win tomorrow. And lastly, let's talk to the head coach, Koma. As soon as you returned to T1, it looks like you are able to qualify to the finals as well as as advanced to the MSI. How do you feel? I think being able to work alongside such great players and great staff at T1, I think I'm just very lucky that, that we were able to make it this far. I'm just very lucky to work alongside them. And in the pre-match interview, it looks like you've talked about how much time you put into preparation. Do you think it all showed up today? Yeah, we put in a lot of effort into preparing today. And I think because of how great our players are, I, I believe that they're going to be able to show that a lot better tomorrow. What do you think you were most satisfied with today? Besides today, I think I'm always satisfied with our staff and players. I think just the fact that we, we were able to show what we've been preparing and practicing on stage is what I'm most satisfied with. And Koma, and you with Baker, you guys played at the finals six, eight years ago against Rocks Tigers. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. It's a good memory and I want to make sure that we recreate that and win tomorrow. Now, what is your resolution for your match against Junji tomorrow? So we had a 3-0 score against someone and a 3-1 against Hanwha Life Esports and tomorrow I believe that it will be a 3-2 victory against Jan Ji. And we wish you a successful journey in the LCK Finals. Congratulations! And that's the end of the interview with T1. Please give it up for the T1 players. And now tossing it back to the Spacers. Thank you!